Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Change Bible Study. My name is Chris Bailey. And we're beginning a new series, Matters of the Heart, trying to understand the gift of the believing heart, but also the dangers of an unbelieving heart in the lives of three people, Zacharias, Elizabeth, and Mary. But before we go there, we want to encourage you, please subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube. We rely on your support, not on social media. So we're asking that you please share this with somebody else. Also like the video so it's easier to find and visit our website. If you're not there already, welcome if you are, but that website is changeministry.org. So with that said, let's pray. Father, asking now in the name of Jesus, please speak to our hearts. Amen. In speaking to our hearts, we look at how he has spoken to others. And that's why we go to Luke chapter one, because here in the story of the gift of Jesus coming, it's also the gift of his forerunner, the one who would prepare the way for him. That would be John the Baptist, his cousin. And so when we meet um, the Lord's revelation of the birth of John the Baptist, we actually are introduced first uh, here to Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. It says there in Luke chapter one, when he was there in ministry, praying on behalf of his people that he is given this gift of an angel. It says the angel says now to Zacharias, fear not, fear not Zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John. So far so good because in answer to his prayer, an angel has come to let them know that they're going to bear a child. But there's a deeper issue that comes up in Zacharias's response. Once he hears the good news, Luke 1 18, Zacharias said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Now we start to see the differences. We have two people praying, but apparently only one is believing. And that appears to be Elizabeth because Zacharias, when the angel says what he says, what he's really saying here is saying, whereby shall I know this? How can this be? Because I'm an old man and my wife is a barren old woman. Can you do this? Can this be done? He is questioning and his questioning is revealing unbelief. Because in verse 20, the angel responds, answering says, I'm Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Do you know who I am? And more importantly, do you know who I work for? And because of his unbelieving heart, look at what happens in verse 20. 20 says, behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Two people praying, one person believing. In honoring her faith, Elizabeth's, this is still going to come to pass. But in the meantime, Zacharias, your mouth is going to be closed and I'm going to leave you to your doubt. You won't be able to spread your doubt. You won't be able to speak your doubt, but you're going to sit in that doubt in silence. And this is what happens when an unbelieving heart, even though we pray, he was praying. But what was he really saying in those prayers? He was saying, Lord, can you do this? Can you bless us? And the problem with that is what? That if I don't believe that he can, how can I possibly believe that he will? If I don't believe that he can make it happen, why, where, where would I find the hand or the space or the capacity to then still believe? I don't think you can, but I think you will. No, I don't even think you can do it. This has nothing to do with your mind or your will, Lord. I don't even think it's within the power of your hand to make it to pass. And because of this, he was condemned to, to over nine months of silence. Friends, I want us and God really is praying for us to pray prayers that are rooted in an expectation. But that expectation has to be built on a foundation on what God can do, on what God is able to do. Whether or not he will, we'll talk about that in the next study. But the idea of what God can or cannot do, this is why creation is so important. And this is why our understanding of salvation is critical. Because if I don't believe that I can overcome, why would I even make the effort to overcome? If I don't believe that God can make me, 
Why would I even think that God will remake me? If I don't believe I was born of God by creation, how can I possibly believe then? How will I possibly believe then that I can be born again of that same God? This is vital and we've got to really assess. Let's do what Zacharias did not do. Be honest, reflect and ask ourselves or better yet, ask the Lord, Father, where is my heart? And do I have an unbelieving heart? Because the unbelieving heart, it's not an issue of whether or not the unbelieving heart can ask a question, but the unbelieving heart actually questions God. There is a difference and we'll see it more so in our next study. In the meantime, please subscribe to this channel, share this word with someone else, and above all, believe.